The boogie woman, Caitlin Clark, was trying to get her peers paid. <laughs> I started this gangsta-ish, and this is thanks I get kind of way I feel about it, right? I mean, it is wild, and I know nobody has taken a shot directly at Caitlin Clark, but Caitlin Clark fans, Indiana Fever fans, always feels a little bit by proxy. Um, you know, Clark his name is invoked there. There's an attachment. There's an association to that. And it's tough because Caitlyn has done nothing but carry herself in an exemplary fashion. I'm not being biased. That's just objectively true, right? She has complimented everybody at every turn. She did it on SNL. She did it the other day. She's never said a bad word about any of the other players publicly. She's never said a bad word about any of the pioneers of the game publicly only praises them. She obviously conducts herself in a fashion that um, ingratiated um, her with her teammates, where they seem to be a tight collective who have fun and, and enjoy each other's company. She uh, clearly inspired so many more people to come to the games to watch on television, and she balled out, and she backed it up on the court. So we all know about the Caitlin Clark effect. And when it comes to that, apparently Clark was trying to use her popularity to get other WNBA players paid. Basically the premise was as stated by the fever team president that because there was so much extra attendance and thus extra revenue, obviously when they, they went on the road, those games were sold out. Um, those teams move to different venues to accommodate more fans. Every fever game is selling out at home, you know, filling it to the brim. And she's aware that that's bringing in more money. She's aware that WNBA players don't make that much money. She doesn't make that much money salary-wise. And she asked if some of that, the, the extra money that's coming in, if, if there could be a bonus paid to uh, opposing players, to opposing players. And didn't want it shared publicly or didn't ask for it to be shared publicly and never shared it publicly. And now it's public at this moment, which may be good timing considering um, everything that, that's been out there uh, and, and talked about. And really, uh, there's nothing that should, you know, you can complain about her whining to the refs or, or talking trash on the court or little minor things, a turnover. But there's nothing in the body of work that is anything but positive when it comes to Caitlin Clark and all the stories in the WNBA really in the broadest sense should be positive. The ratings are way up. The attendance is way up. All the things you want from a big time sports league. But here were the, the comments from the, the fever uh, team president and since it's Barber. Uh, and she was on, I will put the, the, full YouTube, the economic club here of Washington, D.C., in the description. I'll put the full link in the description. Oh, and since it's off the record, here's all you need to know about Caitlin Clark. When we would go to away games, they always sold out. Um, unbelievable. So Atlanta would normally have 3,000, 4,000 people. Now they have 17,000 people, and they sold 1,000 standing room only tickets. So when we walked into the arena, people were on that third balcony looking down at the tops of our players' heads to watch. It's, it's, it's really hard to take in. After a few away games and all of the sellouts, Caitlin asked the WNBA if they would pay spot bonuses to the away team players. She said, wow. we're, we're making all this new revenue and I would like the away team to benefit from that. Could they get a spot bonus? So that's the heart of Caitlin Clark. I mean, that's a classy, amazing yeah. person. So, but it, and it's, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The answer was no, by the way, because yeah, it's a collective say, so bargaining agreement and the Players Association couldn't do but it. But it is a little bit like the Michael Jordan effect, right? Mm -hmm. So, in other words, this has changed, to some degree, changing yeah. the economics of the sport in a really remarkable way. It's uh, The people at Nike told me that the thing that Caitlin has done is also similar to what Tiger did in that they brought new fans to the sport. Right. So Michael Jordan energized and became a role model for all the kids. So Caitlin's got that. She's brought new fans to it. But she's even more than that in that she's 22. So she came right out of college and hit, you know, very successful. I mean, our start to our season was tough. 
I got emails all the time from people. You should fire your coach. You should fire your GM. You should, because we were on the road playing the best teams. It was really hard. And then one day I got an email from a fan that said, you should be fired. <gasps> I'm gonna do that. You no, know, I printed it. I printed it. I'm like, oh my God, they think I'm relevant. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> First of all, I don't know how she thought it was off the record if there were cameras there, but nonetheless. Um, and, you know, it does go to show you when you talk about new fans, that's why when Caitlin made the the, the statement condemning um, and saying that nobody should be subjected to the hate that's been out there, she didn't want to alienate the new fans. So many different fans have come in. And they are real fans. They are legitimate fans. And they, they want to be fans of the league. I mean, I think there's a real burning desire from a lot of people to be fans of the league. And it, it is that, you know, I, I've said it a billion times, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, whatever the case may be, but elevating an entire league in the process of elevating herself. It's interesting to hear Nike reference there because I'm wondering when the big Nike campaign is going to come. You have to imagine. Maybe the offseason is a good time for it, to be honest. The big Nike campaign, the Nike shoe drop, because you know those things are going to sell like crazy. They are, by every precedent we've seen, those things are going to sell like crazy. So I'm interested to see when that's going to happen. And yet the CBA didn't allow this spot bonus payment that Caitlin apparently advocated for. But the truth of the matter is, Caitlin Clark is eventually going to get everybody else paid. That's just the truth of the matter. There's no feelings, emotions, anything else. Since she came in, there's been this explosion in popularity. And other people played a role in it. Other people played a role in building it. Other people played a role in incremental increases in popularity. Other players have gained popularity. In the midst of this, obviously, Angel Reese was another name who was a big part of the, this whole equation. You know, the, the next wave are big names that are going to be a big part of the, the whole equation. But the, the term exists around her name for a reason, and it doesn't need to be explained. It, I mean, if you can't figure it out by now, you don't have a working brain. And the media rights deal that they just signed has to have a trickle-down effect. I don't know when that will take uh, place. I'm sure they, when they opt out of the CBA and renegotiate and all those things. And, and all that extra attention, all that extra money, all that extra revenue will go to the players and they will have more leverage. As a whole, they will have more leverage in, in large part because of Caitlin Clark. And her explosion... And her presence on the scene will be the the moment that was planted uh, that that everything grows from. But I, it was a a nice anecdote to see in the midst of this sea of negativity. When, as I've been saying, everything around the WNBA in the broadest terms right now should be a positive story.